So this is Moodle for the Lone Ranger in condensed form. The Japanese down in the corner shows that it's being done in Pecha Kucha format, so that will keep it short and snappy for you. Um, 20 slides, 20 seconds per slide, and here we go. Um, I'm going to start by showing you what it's not. Um, it's not a quick fix for your problems. Um, it's not going to be full of psychobabble. We're not going to have anything about pedagogy. We're not going to be doing anything like that. It's not me telling you what to do, and it's not full of computer code, because that's not really what we're about as teachers. We're about getting our subject matter across to our teachers. I started off with no funds. I had no time and no domain. I had nothing to do with this Moodle system. I didn't know how to get started. Um, and my colleagues didn't want it either, but I hadn't got a fear of computers, so I started anyway. Suck it and see approach, if you like. First thing is, don't panic. Corporal Jones knew that, and um, that's the best attitude you can have. You can't break much by pushing a button on a computer. So getting started was a fairly simple matter, um, and I tried things and lots of things went wrong, but hey, one way or another, we came through, and eight years later, it's still running. Um, I started off with about five quid in my hand. Um, that was enough for two months of hosting on a website. I had my crash test dummy, um, a student that was willing to have a go for nothing. I needed an email account to register, and about 20 minutes to get my first presentation, my first thing up and running. That way, I could take on the big guys. <laughs> um, being a lone teacher, you're able to be more agile. You can do things that the big companies can't do much quicker. Um, and it helps to improve your presence. That's one of the great things that Moodle does. It makes you look bigger than you are. Important was to use the KISS principle at the start. Um, keep it short and simple. One of the most important things you can ever do is not try and make it too complicated when you're starting out. Do the easy things and let it grow organically. Um, the best advice you can have, really. Don't be too imaginative. Um, start off with simple multiple choice quizzes, gap fill things. Um, you can do an awful lot with just those two types of question in a quiz. Um, you can do a lot of checking. You can do a lot of um, give a lot of opportunities for students to practice things, um, and it gives you confidence. Um, you're going to run into trouble, and the forum is your new best friend. Uh, the Moodle forum is great for helping people. You need your crash test dummy, um, the student account, to check that everything's working. Um, you can Google stuff. You need coffee, and you need an admin. Yeah, and in this case, I had an admin called Olaf Elge. Um, there are three things that can really make a, a basic Moodle site good. The book module, the quiz module, the glossary module. Add to that Google Drive for some online storage and sharing, and you've got the basis of a very good system. The glossary. Basically, it's about vocabulary lists. I learned about it first in a Biggles book when I was a kid and hadn't heard the word since then. But it's great for storing jargon, key concepts. It's a great resource. Um, students can look up the jargon. It's a great activity. They can create the jargon themselves. And I'll come back to Question Bank la later. Um, the book, yeah, it's a sort of multimedia f folder. Um, you can store text, links, YouTube videos can be embedded. You can put your own drawings in, your own videos, and sound files, which is really great for adding an audio dimension to the text that you've provided. Um, some of the ideas here from the book, um, I did a module on Torchwood, um, and here was some extra material on the music of the Second World War. Um, there's a glossary popping up in the bottom right-hand corner, a bit of embedded video about Doctor Who and the start of the Torchwood concept. Um, all of those things can be added to the book. A great idea is to have a warehouse course where you store all these ideas because recycling them is great. The book is really useful. Um, it says no to the scroll of death. You can see on the left there, lots and lots of text. On the right, it's condensed into neat pages, makes it much better for the user. 
um, quizzes. Yeah, lots of progressive teachers say it's not a good idea and we should be about uh, students creating their own learning, but it's damn popular entertainment. So um, there's a lot of options with the quiz. You can make it easy. Um, you can make it hard. You can put random questions in, which means that there's lots of variation for the learners. Google provides you with a source for storing all this information at the start, sharing other resources, files, um, and it has a great drawing program which produces really neat graphics like that one on the purchasing process at the bottom. Um, good idea all around. You could use Dropbox too, but hey. Plugins. Yeah, um, plugins. There are thousands. There's over a thousand official plugins for Moodle. Um, there are so many of them that you can really get lost with the idea of what to do, what to use. Do they conflict with each other? All sorts of stuff like that. You need to look at it. You need to use them wisely. Number one uh, admin uh, plugin is Poodle. Great for adding audio content and showing videos in strange formats. Attendance is usual. Progress, letting the learners see how they're getting on and configurable reports for finding out what's working, what's not working and other details. Poodle crops up again as the top teacher plugin. Again, providing this um, a multimedia uh, dimension to your site. Games are great. They can draw information from the glossary um, to create crosswords, hangman, stuff like that. New question forms, drag and drop, um, and corrections. That's it. Wow, that was a quick version of the one hour lecture. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And by all means, get back to me if you think that it could be useful in any way. The way ahead might look like a dead end, but I promise you at the end of that path was a great beach bar with a wonderful cold beer.